St. Elizabeth's Hospital, located in southeast Washington, D.C., opened in 1855 for the care of the mentally ill residents of the District of Columbia, as well as those in the Army and Navy. Eventually consisting of more than 100 buildings on more than 300 acres, the hospital was its own little village within the city. What we have here is a site that is largely intact and is very important for so many different reasons. It's really a rare opportunity to see physically and then to help interpret a whole village and a whole way of life for patients, for doctors, for a whole part of the city. So it is possible to do the kind of research both on site and in archives and then with through interpretation to bring the story of St. Elizabeth's to life. And it does touch on so many parts of Washington history, community history here, and national history. As the General Services Administration redeveloped the west campus of the hospital, they implemented an archeological resources plan to help investigate the site during the construction process, as well as an education effort to present the history to the public. As part of that education effort, it commissioned Thomas Otto to write a 300-page narrative book on the history of St. Elizabeth's. There were little bits and pieces of history about the hospital over the years, but the, um, not all of it was well documented, and some of it was kind of based on, you know, kind of local lore and not always traceable to uh, uh, facts. <laughs> the National Archives, there's uh, hundreds of boxes of uh, material on the hospital's history from the beginning to about the 1980s, and there are even 356 linear feet of patient files um, that as long as they're at least 75 years old, you can even go back and look at those. So there was more information than one could get through almost in a lifetime in, in researching the hospital. In 1852, Congress appropriated $100,000 to create a hospital for the mentally ill. President Fillmore asked Dorothea Dix, a social reformer, and Dr. Charles Nichols, a physician for the mentally ill, to design the hospital. And the general thought was that the buildings needed to have good views for patients, they needed to have good access to air and light, and uh, provide a safe um, atmosphere for the patients. So the building was laid out in an echelon, kind of a main building and then wings that step back. And that allowed the views and the air and the light. And the location, of course, here in Anacostia, also provided a kind of pastoral setting, but still with a connection and with views to the city. Because it was at this time that psychiatric care more or less had to do with environment. And you know they didn't necessarily know a lot of the causes of any of the illnesses or really even how to treat them. And so it really was, their theory was that it was about environment. And the, the calmer and more idyllic the environment, the better it would be for the patients. The book relies almost entirely on primary source material found in various archives in the district. It included personal letters, patient records, internal memos, photographs, and myriad other types of documents. It revealed a self-sustaining institution. I think one of the really amazing things about the, the hospital is that it was so self-sufficient for so many years. Um, in addition to growing a lot of their own food, they had their own dairy herd, they had chickens and pigs, they made mattresses, they made brooms, they made a lot of the uh, clothing by the staff, for the staff and the patients was made on site. And so many aspects of daily life were actually performed by employees or patients as part of their therapy. And um, it really was kind of its own community. Uh, one of the things about archaeology is that it, it has the ability to give voice to the voiceless. And by that I mean, you know, the doctors here at St. Elizabeth's, the administrators, there's reams of documentation that tell their side of the story. There's really very little documentation from the patients themselves. But the material culture that we found on campus here can tell the story of patients at St. Elizabeth's. Beginning in 2004, archaeological work began on the west campus of the hospital first through research and data collection, and then through physical site investigation. Archaeologists used innovative techniques such as geoarchaeology that studies the soil to determine potential sites of early native settlements, and GIS modeling to map the campus for digs. In some instances, we used shovels and did shovel test pits to try and find artifacts below the surface. In quite a few of the areas, though, uh, at St. Elizabeth's, a lot of fill had been placed on the original land surface, so we actually had to take backhoes to strip the fill off to try and get down to that original land surface. So once we did that, we were able to use our traditional techniques of doing shovel test pits or test units to look for artifacts. The West Campus is now a level five 
security facility and the community just can't walk on the grounds anymore. So um, in order to keep us connected, they conducted these tours that continued to give us access to the campus and to also give us some idea of how the development was going. The Swiss GSA's goal was to make as much available. Our partners from DC Preservation League, um, Rebecca Miller and Amanda McDonald and um, Howard Berger frequently. Uh, they're out here the third Saturday of every month um, helping us lead the tours of the campus. They do all of the, the reservations and, and handle that for us and it's really extraordinary. We frequently have 70 or 80 people who come out and so it's really incumbent upon us to use every means possible to share um, the story of the campus, but also physically to show the campus. I think that historic preservation is good because when you look at St. Elizabeth's, uh, both the East Campus and the West Campus, they don't make buildings like that. They don't build buildings like that anymore. And the architecture is just absolutely incredible. Uh, when you look at the roofs, for example, they don't make them like that anymore. And, and St. E's was designed to be like a self-sustaining little city within the District of Columbia because it was caring for the mentally ill. I think that preserving that history makes that particular campus very rich.